I've been here for 22 years or 23 years. Word got out that there was a bunch of butterflies down here, so I came down here and I estimated there was probably eight to 10,000 here. It was about one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. The trees were just coated with them. It looked like ornaments from Christmas trees. Uh, and it was just not just one or two, but just the whole limbs were sagging. I've worked for the Forest Service uh, for 40 years. Um, so I, I went to all different places. And monarchs, of course, one of the ones that are the premier butterfly that people like to see. When I retired, I decided to get involved in the, the monarch project because I love taking pictures of them. It's just kind of a passion of mine. And what better way than to take pictures than to come down, tag them, and just kind of help out with it. Starting usually around the 1st of August, the uh, ones that do make the trip down to Mexico, they will start funneling down from northern Upper Peninsula, Canada, and those areas like that. They gather here as their stopping off point. They're waiting for the favorable winds, so if it's not a north wind to west wind, they may not be here. They'll maybe disperse throughout the peninsula, nectaring up and getting the strength to make the, the migration over to Door County. The tagging works, um, the project is done with the Hiawatha National Forest here, the Monarch Project. We have little tags and the tags are, you know, maybe about half the size of a thumbtack. We come down here in the morning to tag, right when the sun starts to come up because the Monarchs aren't fully charged yet to fly around and they're easier to catch. First thing you do is you look at it and see if it's a male or a female. Open the bottom wings up the hind wings. If there's a black dot on each side, it's a male. If there's no black dot, it's a female. On the, the underside of the hind wing, you put the tag right there and then you let the butterfly go and you record the time that you did it and the tag number and whether it was a male or female. You collect all that data and give it to the Monarch Project and they keep track of it. They'll coat the trees that are all around us here, the cedar trees, and they get the right day when the, the sun comes out, they open their wings up because they are kind of solar powered. When they open their wings up, the sun warms their whole body up and with the favorable wind, once they get warmed up enough, they start flying and they do something called soaring, which is they kind of circle the area into the point where they get up high enough into the winds and then they head out to Door County. There's research that they can get up into the jet stream and float along. It's a well over a thousand mile trip, I believe, down to where they winter at in Mexico. Every year there's a new generation. The ones that migrate from here that are migrating right now will make it all the way to Mexico if they're fortunate enough. But the ones that make it back are usually the third, the fourth, maybe even the fifth generation. Probably the best thing that will help the butterflies is making sure there's a lot of milkweed because that is the only plant that the caterpillars raise on. Without milkweed, there's no monarchs. <laughs> it, it's, it's fun. You know, you get excited about, you're always waiting to have that one big migration moment that seems to come once a year when I'm scheduled to tag and just hoping that I just see the trees coated with it.